What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingBee.com and in this video, we're gonna continue building out our search function for our CRM tool with Python and Kinter. All right guys, in this video, we're gonna continue to build out our search customers function, add some different functionality to it and make it work a little bit better. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap, which is definitely going up in the new year, 2020 in January. So if you want that low price, be sure and lock it in now. Okay, so we've got this search customers function and we can search by things and one record comes up and that works. But what happens if we have lots of records? So I'm gonna close this and let's list our customers here. Off camera, I added another record. So Mary Elder. So we have two records that have Elder in the last name. So now if we come here to search and let's see if we search for Elder and we search by last name as we built this out in the last video. If we click this, we get just one long thing of John Elder and then Mary Elder starts here and just kind of keeps going. And that'll just keep stringing along to the right like that forever unless we fix that. So obviously that's no good. So we're gonna work on that a little bit in this video. So let's go ahead and close this. Now, I could tell you how to do this, but instead I'm gonna show you how you can kind of figure out how to do things like this on your own in the future. So let's come to our search customers function. This is what we built out in the last video. Check the playlist if you didn't see it. And we can come down here and this is where we're printing out onto the screen into a label, our search result. And the result is just this result variable that we fetched from our database. So what we can do here is just print this out to the terminal. So we're doing this because we wanna see what this data looks like. What is the database returning to us? What does it look like? We need to know that in order to figure out how to break it apart. So I'm just gonna print this to the terminal with a regular print function and we can save this. So let's head back over here and run our program again. And now if we search customers and let's type in elder and we wanna search by last name, nothing changes here. But if we close this, you can see now in the terminal, nothing's changed. But when we end the program, boom, it prints that out onto the terminal. So we can take a look at this and let's see what we have here. We've got these square brackets, and that means that this is a Python list. And inside of the list, it looks like we've got a tuple, or tuple, however you want to pronounce that, for each record. So this would be tuple zero, and this would be tuple one, because list items start at zero, right? So inside of our list, we've got basically another list, in this case, tuple, and they're separated by a comma. So if we want to put each of these things on their own line, we need to separate this out as a list with items in a list. And luckily we already know how to do that. We've already actually done that. So if we come down to our define list or to our list customers function, remember this is, I don't know, three or four videos ago, we created this for loop that will enumerate our results because you can enumerate a list and then we can keep track of the index number and another variable. And then we can just loop through here. And then for each of these items in our list, we can print them onto the screen like this, and we can move it down to the next row by indexing or by referencing this index number. So we can use the same exact sort of setup for our search function. So let's go ahead and copy all of this and just head up to our search function, search customers function. And let's find where our labels are printed, that's right here. And we can get rid of this print thing, we don't need that anymore. We've already discovered how the data is returned. So I'm just gonna paste all this in and we need to, let's see, tab all this over. That looks right. Okay, so what we essentially want is instead of lookup label, we want search label. Let's make that change. And let's see, we're not printing it to the list customer query window, we're printing this to the search customers window, I think. Yeah, right here, search customers, right? That's the window we're on. Okay, so now it's setting up the columns, but it's creating an index based on this enumerate function, right? So it'll start at index zero. So actually, let's just 
copy the or let's comment out these two lines and save this and let's just run this to see what happens we're gonna this is not gonna look right but it'll show us at least sort of what's going on and then we can fix the problem and move on from there so search customers we want to search for elder and we want to search by last name okay see what's going on here the index starts at row zero but we've already got stuff in row zero so it's just overriding it so that's no good so we need to fix that so let's do that fun so we're starting at as i said at index number zero because lists start at zero but we don't want to actually start at zero so let's go index and let's just go plus equals two so we're going to start right off the bat with instead of index zero we're going to start on index two so plus equals two you could also go index equals index plus two but plus equals two is just shorthand for that. So, all right, let's save this and run it and see if that did the trick. So search customers. We wanna search by last name elder. And we want to search by last name. And boom, now it pops it down right below. Now you'll notice our thing here doesn't quite cover all this. Why is that? Well check this out it's putting the first item our first name and our last name in column zero and column one and this one is in column two these columns already have things so they're already a certain width and so it's just centering them in those columns so that makes this whole thing not quite big enough so we need to probably change the width of this i don't know maybe another hundred or so let's play around with it and see so where is that designated let's look through here got so much stuff going on i'm losing track of where everything is so uh let's see we need the search let's go down to our buttons and search customers what we're doing is the command of search customer so we need to find this search customer function so let's just look for that list customers search customers here it is so okay so here is where we our thing is defined so let's go 800 by 600 let's go i don't know let's go 900 by 600 i lose track of what is what so we can search by elder still doesn't quite fit so let's try well, let's just give it a thousand thousand by 600 let's run it again search customers search by last name of elder okay now it all fits yep with a little despair so okay that works so one more thing we need to look at if we search customers now since we change this code around what happens when nothing comes up Hey, you forgot to pick a drop down. Oops. Let's search by last name of FDF, da, 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 right? Boom. Now it goes down, right? So that's not what we want. We need to fix that. So let's pull back up our code and record not found. So instead of it doing that, let's create an if else statement. So let's go if not result else. And then let's move all of this over into our else statement so let's save this see if that does the trick let's run this again search customers we want gobbledygook by last name oh now we get nothing at all oh you know what we forgot to do put our output onto the screen so here we need this oops copy this So let's look at this. So the text is not going to be Y anymore. It's going to be result. And our search label will be instead of index and that it will be, well, what are we on? Probably row three, zero, one, or row two, column zero. Okay, that should work. So let's save this, pull it back up, run it again. Search your customers. Search by something, record not found.
search by elder, uh, last name, boom, pops it onto the screen. And uh, this is still showing up below there. Maybe we can do something to get rid of that if we wanted to. I'll just leave that to you. It's kind of trivial. So, okay, so things are starting to look a little better here. This functionality is becoming a little bit more useful. Now, you remember we have our list customer function here. If we pull this up, we can save this to Excel. If we want, we could do the same thing for that list for the search customer screen if we want. So we go down to list customers. Now let's see, where is save to Excel? We could create a button. And we could probably write to CVS. We could probably use the same function, maybe. Let's see. Where did we put that write to CVS thing? There it is up here. Yeah, it looks like we could maybe just do that. So we can come down to our list customers and let's just grab this. Our CVS button code and let's bring it up here to our search now. And probably inside of our else loop here, but we can pop this in. So line it up with your for statement here. And it's not list customer query. We want this to be in search customers. And let's see, the result, that's okay. That's probably okay. Index plus one, column zero. All right, let's save this and run it and see if this works. So search customers. We want search by last name, elder. Boom, the button pops up. We save to Excel. We should probably create a little pop-up that says save successfully. I'll leave that to you. All right, let's pull up File Explorer, go to our GUI directory and find our customer.cvs. And we see John and Mary Elder have been saved to our CVS. Awesome. We didn't even really have to do much anything to our code to make this happen. So very cool. And uh, yeah, pretty neat. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 60,000 students learning to code just like you. And that price is going up in the new year, don't forget. So if you want that super cheap price, grab it now because it's definitely going up very soon. So my name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.